riders crossed the Fox Hole Shot line. It was number four, Arno Tonus, who got there before everybody else. But here's in Yamaha's first Fox Hole Shot of the season. But he lost a couple of positions early on to Siwa and Paul Ann. Federer came to watch it free. Three Yamahas, four Yamahas in the battle. All led out by the number four of Tonus. Jeremy Siwa all over the back of Geiser. crashed out a bit in the latter stages and came home in 10. Arnold Tonus back on the podium for the first time in two years. And here's Yamaha. What a fantastic day we have here in Portugal. Round six of the FIM Motocross World Championship. Welcome back to our live studio show on MXGP T, everybody. Our second guest is in position, Arno Tonus from Monster Energy Wilvo Yamaha MXGP. And uh, Arno, great to have you back. But you know what? Let's just cut straight to the chase. Last week, <laughs> you had a huge smile on your face. The smile is still there. Just tell us about Portugal. Yeah, it was amazing. You know, like um, I've been through a lot and, and being back on the podium was a very special emotion. Like you could see, I, I mean, uh, I really expressed it. It was it was super cool. So uh, somehow it stayed in me the whole week, and I'm still joyful about it. So it's uh, it's super cool. Um, we yeah, like I said, we go through uh, ups and downs, but uh, when when it clicks like this, it's uh, it's really uh, enjoyable. And yeah, I felt like my riding was solid. Also, I had to to fight through it. Was not only like the result itself, but the way I rode the whole motos and battling with the guys it was uh it was very cool for me but you were up there in all sessions in the free practice the time practice the qualifying race and then you you know polish it off with uh two motos as well two solid third place finishes that must be good for yours and the team's morale yeah exactly the team was really happy about uh the attitude the riding everything uh also the start my start were great so it was uh also yeah happy for renee you know the, the guys working on the engine uh really hard in the team and uh first all shot of the year so everything felt felt great and like you said solid motos uh two two third place yeah, oh, like that. Look at that place. <laughs> <laughs> i loved also the comment you said uh, welcome back to the podium my friend and really fit to the, oh. the emotion was really yeah, yeah. cool it was a yeah. fantastic moment uh last week was pretty hard pack it's going to be similar here in france and i know in 2014 you were second here in mx2 so obviously a place that you like Yes, it's a place that I like. It's really a ground where I, I grew up onto. You know, in Switzerland, it's also this kind of dirt, yeah. pretty hard pack. And um, my parents have a house not so far from here, so I used to uh, come on this track and ride in the area when I was a kid. So uh, it's a place that I actually know. I remember when you were on Suzuki, Kenny come, used to come and ride with you down here as well. Didn't yeah, you? exactly. We were Rocks. practicing here in uh, in the winter together and have a few sand tracks uh, near the sea and uh, come in on in Saint Jean to ride on hard pack. So uh, yeah, it's a region that I like. I also speak French, so it feels yeah. pretty much home for me. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, more from Arno in a minute, but here's how you can get involved with MXGP in 2019. Here's another quick reminder of how you can watch MXGP this year with our MXGP TV season package, which includes live and on-demand action from every round of the season, including qualifying races, the FIM Monster Energy Motocross of Nations, WMX, and all EMX European races. It's the only place to watch every second, every weekend, every race of MXGP absolutely live. Also included is our studio show and our 26-minute highlights program, Behind the Gate, which is available every Tuesday after each GP. For more info, check out our website, mxgp.com, and enjoy. There's a lot going on in that package, so it's there well is. worth it. Yeah. <laughs> Loads. Uh, well, look, Arno, back to you. Um, that result last weekend pulled you up to ninth in the championship, so uh, you know you're in that top ten. But when we look at uh, Trentino, the signs were already there, weren't there? Fourth overall, you showed signs of getting back to your normal speed. Normal speed, where I guess you expect to be. 
Yes, exactly. It took me a little bit of time. I, I felt like I had a good preparation this winter, but you cannot replace racing. I mean, I, wanna, I was off for a year, so um, I kind of struggled to really pass guy. You know, I was often stuck behind them and lose my rhythm and my focus. So I felt like I really need, uh, needed to get back on that uh, aggressivity and this kind of stuff. And yeah, I feel like uh, now I can... Um, contend for top five and podiums, and that's where I want to be. All right, we're okay. going to speed through the. Yeah. We've got five social a few, questions. A few questions for you on social. Social Molia Xox. Hopefully, I pronounced that right. They're probably what kisses it, in hugs. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, <laughs> what's it like riding motocross as a as a job? It is demanding. Like we go through a lot of um, tough time and also some joyful time, like I experienced last weekend. And um, it's not really like a job. You have to think and breathe it every, mm. every moment you know if you want to be at the top it's something that you uh, always want to improve and always want to get better it's not like you go uh, to your practice and then you're done it's finished till till the next race you're always thinking and try to understand and improve and get better so uh, it's demanding but it's cool I enjoy it a yeah. lot and uh, yeah I really take it as a gift I'm happy to, to do it as, a, as my job Okay. Uh, from Simone Carrera, 54, how much cardio and gym work do you do in the week? In the week, um, probably three times plus the, the racing. So, um, But during the season, the program is a bit different. We mm. do a lot of recovery thing and um, try to oxygen the body as much as we can because it's a lot of races in a row, so it's already intense. Yeah. We have probably one, the Wednesday is the day where you push your body pretty hard, but the rest is more... Uh, few exercises here and there and try to really be fresh for, for the weekend. Yeah, okay. Uh, XX Mateo 211, what is your favorite food? It's raclette, it's a Swiss cheese. Oh, I you love know? that. Do yeah. you love that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and do you dip it in something or you dip something in it or? No, you, well, you just put it, warm it up and yeah. then put it on potatoes oh, or stuff like yeah, that. I this love is that. amazing. Yeah. It is delicious. <laughs> Not very healthy, but it's good. Oh, well. Coming up no. on next week's cookery show yeah. with Lisa and Arno. <laughs> No, I do it's love so that. Good, yeah. It's, it's delicious. A, more something that you eat in the winter, but uh, yeah, I could go through all the time. Nice, yeah. nice. Okay, so from ONJD03, what's your favorite track? Um, I would say Matali. Um, mm -hmm. I, I really love that track, and uh, it's it's a very special special place. And the track is also huge. You know, it's not something we used to. It's a little bit tough in the beginning for time yeah. practice and everything. It seems like the lap never hand up, but it's really big jumps and really cool to ride. Okay. And wide. Wide, yeah. Wide and a bit too wide sometimes because the track this year <laughs> yeah. sometimes was no uh, like boundary and yeah. we went a little bit even wider than that. So but it's it's a cool feeling. You can change your line a lot and yeah, it's, it's nice to ride. Okay. And um, finally from Austin at top 31, do you believe you can be world champion? I do. I do believe inside myself that I can be and if you don't, then it's it's uh, it's a shame for yourself because yeah. uh, we all we all strive to be the best and uh, you have to believe in it. Wh whatever I, I've been through, I feel like uh, I have this in me and I will do everything I can to, to make it happen one day. Okay. Cool. Brilliant. Well, look, we uh, had a minute or so left. Uh, just looking at the track conditions here at the moment, we had a big rainstorm yesterday, uh, but it looks like it's done the track a lot of good. They've obviously watered it overnight and this morning as well. It looks amazing. Yeah. Track's amazing, like you said. Yeah, we had the perfect. Uh, Rain yesterday, just um, watered the track naturally, and it seems like now it's going to be a, a really good weekend. Mm. And then uh, you touched on it before. It is kind of a nice track. You know it well. Um, I mean, what is it like to ride now? I rode it years ago when it was kind of a little bit different in the middle. Um, but um, but it's, you know, it's changed a lot. Um, you know, how is it to ride? Is it, is it uh, a difficult place to uh, pass on, or...? Does it get pretty to be honest with you, I, I didn't write this layout yet. It was a little bit different also yeah. the last time I rode here in 14. But uh, it seems like it's a bit more flowing now. And also the way they prep the track is a lot better. The, the prep the track is a lot better than it used to be. They rip it more and it's more lines. Usually when you came to a French GP in the past, it was yeah. just hard pack and dusty and pretty tough to pass. But now I think they improve a lot on the prepping of the track. And it's good for racing. Cool. Well, look, Arno, thanks for joining us here Thank today. you very much. Thank um, you. I uh, hope you enjoyed our chat there with Arno Tonus. Uh, we'll be back in just a few moments with Eric Sorby. Of course, he's an ex-rider and uh, now trainer as well. So uh, we'll catch him in a moment. But before that, let's catch up with some uh, MXGP Highlights Race 2 from Portugal. We'll see you in a moment.